had the conversation on this podcast mm-hmm. a year ago now. Right, right. What we, what we talked about, well, I saw you like this. As men, we talked about that. But again, he didn't have a role model when he became a man. He didn't have a father. Like his father right. died when he was 20 or 21. And he never knew his grandfather. So I think his father's father died before his father was a man. Right. right. So there, there's this right. history of, and you talked about the race, baton, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> here you go. Figure out how to be go, a dad, but, but ain't nobody saying go no more. Nobody. <laughs> yeah. They, they handed it off probably before they got the top speed. So using your analogy, they, they still in the block or they're still at a stance where they're waiting for the baton. And you imagine somebody running up on a full speed and then they start running. Yeah. Right. Yep. That's a, that's a calamity. There's a collision. And, um, I, I know, I know, I'm not always um, the quickest to apologize to my son, but I have started doing it more recently. Right, right. More importantly, I try to think through my behavior before it requires, before I go off, and it requires uh, an, an apology. Right. What's your thought? I mean, I know we're gonna wrap, we're gonna wrap soon, but um, I, I really want to leave the listening audience, men to take an assessment and act accordingly and, and adjust accordingly and women to have a, a perspective of that male thought pattern and, and why sometimes we are the way that we are, man. How do you, how do you, what's your position on addressing what we're teaching our fathers when we're teaching the wrong thing, thing through words or action? I feel like the biggest thing that jumps out, like what you were just saying is, is, just that accountability, man, of, of like, it's hard because a lot of things, you know, you're not supposed to do it this way. You know, there's a better way, but you just, it's an easier said than done type thing. Yeah. Right. So you're standing back and you're looking and it's like, Hey, you know, you're not supposed to do this to your son and you walk away, you know? So then it leaves a lot of room for things that should be apologized for. So there's two problems with that. Notice I said should. The first problem is you're still doing it. So there's still a lot of mistakes happening that need apologies. That's the first issue. The second issue is, okay, we're here. The mistake took place, but you're still not apologizing. Those are two problems. So guess what? Now this young man is going to go out into the world and he a wrecking ball because even if I know I should not be doing this, if I do it, all I'm all I have to do is say I'm sorry. Be mindful of that as well, mm-hmm. of having different approaches to issues or shortcomings. If I mess over you and I'm sorry, I mess over you again, I'm sorry. I leave you hanging, I'm sorry. Yep. Guess what? Keep it. Means yep. nothing. You devalued it. Yep. You know, so now your son is going around in society hurting people, using people, manipulating people. And then when they get caught, I'm sorry. Yep. Are you sorry you did it? Or are you sorry I caught you? It's a difference. Yep. So now we're creating a whole nother problem that we thought we were fixing it. It's kind of like meds. This will lower your blood pressure, but your lips going to swell. <laughs> and you also might die. <laughs> you might die. Yeah. If your liver fall out your body, call this number. Right. So it's the same thing. We have to find a healthy way to like you said, nip it in the bud, fix it before it happens. Yeah. Like you said, you're actively thinking about your actions before you do it to where it doesn't even warrant an apology. I did hopefully. it the right way. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. Yeah. So I I still struggle with this to this day. Yeah. Um, such a passionate person. And that's not an excuse. I'm working on it. Yeah. But man, I've been like this. There's that excuse. But like this my whole life. I don't make it right, young man. Wow. You see how even even if you're in the undoing phase, that kind of overlaps with your parenting phase and you still not right. You still not in the place where you want to point them. Right. And they're right. seeing it. Right. They watch it. Oof. The things that I, you know what my honest, my honest foolproof check is the things I hear come out of my son's mouth. Because I'm almost certain. I can hear what they say and know who they got it from. Either me or my wife. Yep. More often me than her. And there there have been times I've heard some things that made me say, oh, 
I got to tighten up. Yeah. I'm a trash talker by, by nature, you know, sports and what have you. But I don't necessarily want my kids to pick that up in some of the areas they're using it in. So that's the yeah. habit. You see dad do X, Y, Z, you do it. Oh, son, we don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> Especially place. with you, because like you're like, you you generally want the energy to be up around you. You yes. don't come in. I, I don't want to see you mad. Right. I don't want you to see me mad. Like, I don't, <laughs> right. that's not what we're looking for. But when the children see that and then see the audience of other adults reacting to that, and, oh, James, you funny. And they, right. they celebrating you for that. Right. Now they, they take that and apply it in a place where it's not going to be celebrated. Right. Man, that's a, man, we're going right. to have to get in a whole nother, uh, we are. Whole nother, that's, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. And I have instances of that from family members. The, the world, I'm talking preachers and mm. dads and uncles and the world thought they were great and funny and interactive and very here yeah. with what they had going on in their lives. But then when they got home, the family couldn't say the same. You yeah. know what I mean? They were like, yeah, he better dry and cold at the house.